When it comes to nurturing a diverse pool of talent and leadership, Boston has some problems with reputation and reality. One response is an effort to provide more opportunities for students and professionals of color to make connections to tell us about the effort are the Chancellor of UMass Dartmouth, Robert Johnson, and a UMass trustee, also the Executive Director of The Parenting Journey, Imari Paris Jeffries, uh, thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, you, you're, you're both uh, transplants from other states, but I want to start with, with Imari. You had an idea. You, you want to make things work better in Massachusetts. Uh, what do you have in mind? Well, you know, I have a commitment to social justice and equity, and I think from uh, an opportunity to be a UMass trustee, I felt that my day job of working at Parenting Journey would be a natural complement to the work that UMass was already doing. And so I spoke to Robert Johnson about this idea, who, who, who was immediately in support. You know, we were really thinking about uh, UMass as the Commonwealth's university, the Commonwealth's higher ed institution, and how could we represent that in a city that has so many colleges and universities? And one way we thought we could do that is by hosting this event. Uh, Robert Johnson, uh, you know, colleges are supposed to be a pipeline to opportunities here, mm -hmm. uh, but what do you see at UMass start with? I mean, do people want to go in that direction, or are they attracted to other options maybe? Well, you know, UMass Dartmouth, we get students from literally all over the state, uh, about 39 different states and about um, well over 100 countries. Uh, so we attract people from all over the Commonwealth down to UMass Dartmouth. Um, you know, we provide this private college educational experience and public university value. We have a balance of the liberal arts and the professional schools. And by the way, the Commonwealth's only public law school, which ranks third in passing the bar only behind uh, Harvard and BU. So I think we have a, a, a great asset. So we do sit on 710 acres of land, by the way, as well. Mario, what about uh, uh, your own experience going from when you were a student here and, and to where you are right now? Uh, talk about how that worked out for you. It, it made you decide to stay here. Well, you know, the vast majority of UMass graduates in general stay in Massachusetts. And so that's one of the things that I think is unique about the UMass experience throughout the entire system. And I think for me, being a transplant, having an opportunity to go to UMass Boston and really engaging in the community, I think that was a value add for me. It made me feel connected. And I think part of it was uh, engaging in service opportunities while I was a student, uh, having an opportunity to have mentors who were community leaders in the city of Boston. Uh, and I think if we could provide that opportunity for other students, not just UMass students, but students throughout the Commonwealth, in, in Boston in particular, an opportunity to fill a part of the city, mm -hmm. I think the likelihood of them staying after they graduate uh, and considering UMass as a place for them to work, um, to thrive, to be uh, a place that they belong to, despite where they came from. Uh, we thought this was a good idea for us to be the, the place um, and the university for this to happen. Robert Johnson, what are you, what are you doing at UMass Dartmouth along those lines? Uh, in terms of diversity? Uh, and, and getting the students to thrive here and, and really want to stay. Well, you know, so we're, we're doing a couple of things. So number one, uh, it's very important that we work with our students to become connected to the community. So we, are, we have launched uh, what we're calling a, a Blue Economy Initiative, which is really about how do we create an ecosystem for job creation, economic development, and entrepreneurship along the 195 corridor going all the way from Providence down to uh, the Cape. Uh, and as we connect our students with employers to give them hands-on experience, it gives them a greater sense of connectedness to the community. So for example, uh, last year's graduating class, 83% uh, of those graduates had at least one experiential learning uh, uh, opportunity while they were in school. So if I am an engineer who has an idea about trying to start a company uh, through our uh, Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, uh, most likely they connected with someone who was already an entrepreneur or someone who was running a company or an angel investor. So when they're thinking about, well, where do I go uh, or where do I want to be in order to start my company, perhaps they will consider staying right there in the area. Our star store um, w through our uh, College of Visual and Performing Arts is located uh, physically 
in downtown New Bedford. And uh, our students uh, and that star store was part of the revitalization of downtown New Bedford. So again, our students in an artsy environment uh, helping uh, a broader art environment to grow and thrive. So it really is about connecting the students and giving them the opportunity to interact with others outside of the institution while they are students. And I think one of the great things about uh, this program of trying to get um, uh, students who are pursuing their masters and PhD programs uh, of, of color uh, together and help them to understand that UMass is the Commonwealth's university is to expose them of the rich uh, opportunities that are available for them uh, right here within the Commonwealth. Uh, we're talking with Robert Johnson from UMass Dartworth and Imari Paris Jeffries from the UMass Board of Trustees. Um, uh, Imari, another thing I, I think college students are concerned about is once they get their degree, um, they like to think that there's a pipeline of connections in a certain field down the line. I mean, I've heard that you know for a lot of students of color, it's great that way down in Atlanta, but. Boston? I mean, do we have at least a potential for that in Boston? Uh, you know, I think we do, and I think this initiative is, is the start of that. Uh, our event this evening has about 150 RSVPs from about eight local colleges and universities, and not just UMass students, but uh, students from BU, BC, Harvard, MIT, et cetera. I think folks are looking to make connections uh, with not only students, uh, but administrators, with leaders. Uh, we've also invited community leaders to this event this evening, and so I think it'll be a unique opportunity uh, for students uh, who may or may not be from here to meet community leaders, build the connections, and build really that social connection and social capital that's needed for the next stage of their life. We've been talking a lot about how this is here for transplants, but what about kids growing up in Boston? The Globe series about the valedictorians mm -hmm. who are having all these struggles. Um, mm -hmm. What about keeping them here and making sure that they're more successful? Well, I think, I think that's really, really, really important. And I think, again, finding, you know, students generally don't, are not successful in college. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it's because of finance, but it has more to do with uh, them not feeling connected to that particular institution. And I think that what we're trying to do with this particular program uh, for uh, the graduate students uh, is to give them a greater sense of connectedness. When we did this for the very first time last year, um, you know, you had well over 100 students, uh, African-American students in the same room, and they were like, wow, there is a community here. So part of it is creating a greater sense of, of, of community. So for students growing up here, I mean, think about this. So if we were to fast forward five years and we have this, this network group pulled together very, in, a, in a very tight way, what if we started bringing you know, students of color who are in high school and middle school and, and building a program so that they can also see the possibilities and it's kind of growing our own pipeline you know when you think about higher education all of our institutions uh, say you know we have a difficult time finding you know african-american uh, faculty and staff well uh, what i saw last year and what we will see tonight is that there are people here we just have to do a better job in making them or enabling them to connect with the resources that are available so i know for us you know, we will have people from our campus, several deans, um, uh, the chief HR officer, so forth and so on, so that people can see um, their opportunities right here. All right. Well, thank you both very much. Robert mm -hmm. Johnson, mm -hmm. Eddie Murray, mm -hmm. Paris Jeffries. Mm -hmm.